Okay, uh, let's select uh, this 2000 A equation. 2000 uh, say equation. Right, uh, somebody unmute the mic and read this equation here 2000 AL uh, electricity as equation. Somebody unmute the mic and read it. A 60 watt light bulb is connected to a 12 volts voltage source using a copper wire. The bulb lights with its full brightness. Roman number one, calculate the current through the wire. Right, thank you very much. So what's the normal equation that we use to find a current here? What is the normal equation that we use? V equals IR. But here, do we know the resistance? Lamai, do we know the resistance? You have to talk to me. Please don't make me angry. Do so, we know the resistance? No. No, we don't know the resistance. Very good. So therefore, if we wish to proceed, we must find the resistance. Or we should use the equation to find the current without resistance. So what are the uh, available options here? We should find the resistance of the bulb or we should find another equation to calculate without using the uh, resistance. So uh, let me use the equation of power. There are three equations for power. What are the three equations for power here? Power equals VI. Uh, power equals I square R. I square into R. And power equals V square divided by R. So, uh, which equation is more suitable for this equation line? Which is more suitable for this uh, case? Lamai? Power equals VI. Power equals VI. Very good. So, for the, uh, if we start saying the heading, we write heading as 2000 AL uh, electricity as equation. Write the heading as 2000 AL electricity as equation. Uh, then write all the uh, four equations. And we write all the four equations for the power, three equations for the power. And uh, And let's use the uh, let's use this equation power equals VI equation for the Roman number one. For the Roman number one, let's use the equation power equals VI. They have given the power of the bulb as 60 watt uh, equals voltage. We should apply voltage of 12 and the current is I. So uh, let me take, uh, this is 60, let me take uh, 12 to the other side. If I take 12 to the side of 60, multiplication 12 will be divide, uh, division 12, right? And then it is equal to I, right? Uh, what is 12 divided by, uh, 60 divided by 12 here? Am I somebody under the mic and tell me why 60 divided by 12? Five. 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 The other one is the current in the uh, it's the current uh, flows to the bulb here. Five. Please do not forget to write the unit five ampere. Complete the answer here quick.
Lamar, shall we go to the next part of the question? Please give me the permission to go to the next part of the question. Say yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, who wants more time to write? If so, raise your hands up. Raise your hand up if you want any more time to write. If not, I'll go to the next part. Okay, then I'll go to the next part of the question. Right. Uh, but I think you can't see the question properly because uh, it's not in, uh, it is not large enough. So I'll do something like this. I'll increase the size of the question. Okay. Right, now it is in very big size. Somebody under the mic and read Roman number two. Somebody under the mic and read Roman number two, quick. Considering that each copper atom contributes one electron to the conduction process, calculate the number of conduction electrons in one cubic meter of copper. Relative atomic mass of copper 63, density of copper 9 into 10 to the power 3, take Avogadro's number as 6 into 10 to the power 23 atoms per gram mole. Right, what are the given data? Considering that each copper at each copper atom contributes one uh, electron to the conduction process. Calculate the number of conduction electrons in one cubic meter of copper. One cubic meter of copper. It's given right. Right. So what are the given data? Considering that each copper atom contributes one electron to the conduction process, it means one copper atom will give one free electron. One copper atom will give one free electron. That's the meaning. Right? So we should give a try. To find the uh, to find the number of free electrons in a unit volume. So unit volume means uh, one cubic meter. So let's start with the density equation. Density equals mass over volume. Mass over volume. Uh, you also start writing with me. Yeah? You should also write with me. Density equals mass over volume. And using cross multiplication, I'll take uh, density, I'll take volume into the side of density. Division volume come to the side of uh, uh, volume goes to the other side as multiplication volume. Then we get the mass. Please write the things with me here quick. Right? So first I have written the equation density equal mass so volume. Then I have taken volume to the other side by cross multiplication. Finally, I have obtained that uh, density in times volume equals mass. They have given density of copper as 9,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Volume means one. A unit volume means volume means one. Then we get mass. Right? So uh, 9,000 into 1 is 9,000, so we have found something like this. We have found, uh, there are four, look at board. There are four, the mass of, the mass of a uh, unit volume, the mass of unit volume of copper. The mass of unit volume of copper equals 
9000 kilogram is it clear for all now is it clear for all yes right in here describe this we have found the mass of an unique volume of copper a unique volume of copper meaning one cubic meter Dancer. So after that, what should we do here? We have found the mass of and unique volume of copper. So what should we do next? Come on. What is the mass of one mole of copper? Can somebody unmute the mic and tell me? The mass of one mole of uh, copper. Mass of one mole of copper 
is said to be the molar mass, relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is 63. They have given us a data like this. They have given us a data saying uh, relative atomic relative atomic mass of copper. Relative atomic mass of copper is given as 63. Meaning is meaning is uh, relative atomic mass of copper 63 means if we take 63 grams of copper it will contain one mole of copper atoms. Therefore, the mass of one mole of copper is 63 grams. 63 grams. So then, uh, we should find the number of, we should find the number of, number of copper moles. Number of copper moles in an unit volume of copper in an unit volume of copper. How do we find it here? Can somebody unmute the mic and tell me? The mic? Somebody unmute the mic and tell me uh, the, uh, the thing that should I do to find uh, to find the mass of one mole of copper. Divide 9,000 by 63. Very good. We should divide the mass of copper divided by divided by the mass of one mole of copper. Very good. One mole of copper. Right. Uh, mass of copper. The mass of copper is the mass of unit volume of copper. Mass of unit volume of copper was found as 9,000 kilogram divided by mass of one mole of copper. They have given it as 63 grams. Now we have a problem here. What is the problem? We have a small problem. Can you tell me? If we divide mass of copper by the mass of one mole of copper, we can find the uh, number of copper moles. Right, so mass, given mass of copper is 9,000 kilogram and mass of one mole of copper is uh, 63 grams. So what's the problem here? Can somebody tell me the upset here? Convert grams into kilo. kilo well, grams into we kilo. must convert grams into kilograms or kilograms into grams. So the easiest thing is, easiest thing is, uh, let's convert this kilogram into grams. Let's convert kilograms into grams. So 9,000, if I multiply 9,000 by 1,000, kilograms converted into grams, right? Then uh, we will get 63, that is also grams. Now no problem, right? Can you do the, uh, can, how do you do the rest of the simplification here? Can you suggest me a method? Hmm? Can you suggest me a method to do the rest of the simplifications? Lamai? Abu. Best of the class? Okay, then have a rest. You can't talk, so I can't teach. No, sir. Uh, decimals are coming. Hmm? Uh, can't we do something like this here? Uh, listen here. Can I uh, divide this 9,063 by uh, 3? 9,000 divided by 3 is 3,000 into 1,000. 63 divided by 3. Can I divide 63 by 3? 
grams grams cancelled out. Sixty three six divided by three is two. Uh, then uh, three divided by twenty one. So I can divide both sixty three and nine thousand by three. Can you see sixty three here? I I don't know whether you are able to see. Can you see yes, uh, these numbers that are written? 9000 into 1000 divided by 63 can you uh, see those numbers just tell me yes or no yes sir yeah you are able to see them then uh, please tell me uh, whether is it clear for you that we are able to divide this 63 and 9000 by number three is it possible for us to divide or not possible sir possible right? So we can divide uh, 9,000 by 3, then we get 3,000. We divide 63 by 3, then we get 21. Grams to grams cancelled out. Grams to grams cancelled out. Am I right? Uh, the gram terms to this grams terms cancelled out. So my question is, can we divide further this 3,021? Can we divide them further? Yes, sir. Yes, yes how? Sir. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. 3,000 divided by 3 is 1,000. Into 1,000 is there. Right. So it will be 1,000 into 1,000. Uh, then 21 divided by 3. What's it? Seven. 21 divided by 3. Just give me the very quick. 7. 7. So what's our final answer? What is our final answer? Samai? Thousand over seven. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, one into ten is about six over seven. Thousand, yes, dear. Very good. One thousand into one thousand means one thousand into one thousand means ten to the power three. Yeah? Ten to the power six. Ten to the power six. Ten to the power six divided by seven. Am I right? Here? Please check. So we have this much of copper moles. We have this much of copper moles. Please write them all. And if you have any further doubt, just unmute the mic and ask.
Uh, do not divide this, just keep it as a fraction. So we have found the number of copper balls in an unit volume of copper. Uh, who wants more time to write the things here? Raise your hand up if you want any more time to write the things. Okay, then I raise. Right. Uh, finally, we have found that. Finally, we have found that uh, the number of copper moles in an unit volume of copper. How many copper moles are there in an unit volume of copper here? Lamai? How many copper moles are there in an unit volume of copper? 10 to the power 6 divided by 7. Am I right? We have this much of copper moles in an unit volume of copper. Please write the final equation also, Lamai. Right, please write the final equation also. Okay, here. Yeah. Right. Uh, then write, then let's write the next equation. The number of the number of copper atoms, number of copper atoms in one mole, in one mole of copper. So what's the answer? Somebody unmute the mic and tell me the number of copper moles in one mole of copper. Zero to two in ten to the power twenty-three atoms. Very good, very good. It is the Avogadro number, but here they have given the Avogadro number as. Uh, 16 to 10 to the power 23. So we have to use the value that they have given. Okay, They have given the Avogadro's number as 16 to 10 to the power 23, but actual value is uh, 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So we have to use the value even in the question. Number of copper atoms in one mole of copper is the Avogadro number. They have given the Avogadro number as 16 to 10 to the power 23. So then uh, therefore, look at board. Therefore, the number of therefore the number of uh, copper atoms in an unit volume in a unit volume of copper. What's the answer? Hmm? In a unit volume of copper, there is. 10 to the power, that is 10 to the power 6 divided by 7 number of copper moles. Am I right? In one, in an unit volume of copper, in an unit volume of copper, there is 10 to the power 6 divided by 7 number of copper moles are there. In one copper mole, there is 6 into 10 to the power 3 number of copper atoms. Right. So how do you find the number of copper atoms in an unit volume of copper? What should I do? Somebody argue the mic and tell me. Multiply it, sir. Yes, we should multiply. We should multiply this value by the number of atoms in an unit volume in a one mole. Here we have the number of moles should be multiplied, number of moles should be multiplied by the number of atoms in uh, one mole. Number of moles should be multiplied by uh, the number of uh, atoms in one mole. Number of moles multiplied by the number of atoms in and one mole will give us the answer. Can you do the rest and uh, say me the 
answer here, you have divided this now. Tell me the final answer. How many copper atoms will be there in an unit volume of copper? Give a try here. How do we simplify here? Hmm? How do we simplify? Uh, you will see, isn't it? We can find this 6 will be there and divided by 7 will also be there. So the final answer is appear to be 6 over 7. Sorry, yeah, 6 over 7 uh, multiplied by 10 to the power 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power 23 means 10 to the power 29. Is my answer correct? Somebody please tell me whether my answer is correct or wrong. Lamai. Who has obtained this answer? Just raise your hand. Please raise your hand up if you have obtained this answer. Uh, if you divide 6 by 7, then, then what will be the answer? Let's say uh, it is needed to simplify this further in the examination, then how do you simplify this further? If it is asked you to simplify this further, please follow this method. Make 6 into 60. Once 6, in, uh, 6 is converted into 60, 10 to the power 29 will be 10 to the power 28. Can you understand it? I have converted. 6 into 60. Then 10 to the power 28 becomes 10 to the power 29 becomes 10 to the power 28 because one of the zeros in 10 to the power 29 is taken to convert 6 into 60. To convert 6 into 60, I have taken one 10 from 10 to the power 29. So 10 to the power 29 will be 10 to the power 28 because it has given one 10. 
Now we can divide 60 by 0. Right? So the final answer will be final answer will be 60 divided by 7. 7 times 7, 49. 7 times 8, 46. 56. 7 times 7, 49 plus 7, 56. So 7 times 8, 56. Put the decimal point. 60 minus 56 is uh, 4. 40 divided by 7 is 5. 7 times 5 is 35. 5 remaining. 50 divided by 7 is 7. 8.57 into 10 to the power uh, 10 to the power 28. Is it clear? Is it very clear? Who got this answer? Please raise your hand up if you have obtained this answer, am I? Right. But in uh, it, listen here, but in the exam, listen here, if it is needed us to, if, if we have to use this value in future questions, let's say in the next question, let's say we have to use this value, the number of copper atoms in an unit volume of copper, let's say we have to use this value in next question, then we should use the fraction. What is the fraction here? 6 over 7 into 10 to the power 29 or 6 over 7 into 10 to the power 28. We have to use it. Right. The number of copper atoms in an unit volume of copper we have found. Then, please tell me, isn't there? Then we should write a sentence before we go to the next uh, question. The number of, look at it forward, the number of, uh, the number of free electrons, the number of free electrons given by one copper atom, given by one copper atom, one copper atom gives one. Am I right? One copper atom gives one free electron. Right? So then, therefore, therefore, the number of number of free electrons, free electrons given by how many atoms here? Six over 7 given by given by 6 over 7 into 6 over 7 you can write in the value that we have taken 6 over 7 into 10 to the power 29 copper atoms how do we find it somebody unmute the mic and write uh, tell me how do we find it? Or just give me the value. Lamai. If one copper atom gives one free electron, how many free electrons will be given by? 6 over 7 into 10 to the power 29 number of copper atoms. Somebody please tell me here. 8.57 into 10 to the power 28. Yes, dear. Uh, yes, same here. Same. So that is, that is also 6 over 7, 1 free electron. One atom, one free electron. Therefore, this much of electron will give the this much of atoms will give the uh, this much of free electron. So six over seven into ten to the power twenty nine free electrons will be given. Is it clear, or oh, may I again explain? Lama, is it clear, or should I explain it again? And we have this much of atoms in an unit volume. So final answer is, final answer is, therefore, the number of, therefore, the number of free electrons or conduction electrons, number of free electrons in an unit volume of copper. That is equal to 6 over 
over 7 into 10 to the power 29. 6 over 7 into 10 to the power 29. We have divided this earlier. We got the answer as 8.57 into 10 to the power 28. We have already obtained this answer. We have already obtained this answer. Am I right clear? Lamai? Okay, please write. Is everything clear or not? Would like if I explain this again. Anybody in the class? Right, so we have found the number of free electrons in an unit volume of power. We have found the number of free electrons in an unit volume of power. Uh, if you want any more time to write the things, please take a screenshot. I'm going to go to the next question. I'm going to go to the next part of the question. Right. Somebody unmute the mic and read question number three. Somebody unmute the mic and read question number three. Start. If the radius of the copper wire is 0 0.7 millimeters, calculate the drift velocity of conduction electrons in copper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Conduction electrons mean free electrons. What's the point that you should know here? Conduction electrons means free electrons. It has another meaning which move uh, due to the which move due to the influence 
due to the influence of an electric current. Uh, would you please write this equation here? This will help you to understand. What's the meaning of uh, conduction electrons here? They are the free electrons. Conduction electrons are the free electrons. And they are the electrons move uh, when there is an electric current. Got it here? Come on. Please write this sentence. Right. If the radius of copper wire is 0 0.7, calculate the drift velocity. In the drift velocity equation, we have cross-section area. Therefore, first of all, we should find the cross-section area of the wire. Cross-section area of the wire should be found first. Cross-section area of the wire equals, it's a cylindrical wire. If the cross-section area Cross section area is always found by pi r square. I think you know this equation. Cross section area for cylinder is pi r square. Am I right here? Come on. So phi is uh, phi is 22 over 7. Phi is 22 over 7. Multiplied by radius is given as 0 0.7. Is it millimeter or meter? Millimeter. Millimeter. What should we do to convert millimeter into meter here? Divide by 1000. Yeah, there are two options. We can divide it by 1000 or multiply it by 10 to the power minus 3. So I'll use your method. I'll use your method. So I'll divide this 0 0.7 by 1000. Then 0 0.7 is converted into uh, millimeter, 0 0.7 converted into meter. Right. But we should get the square of it. Right. Uh, how do we simplify this further here? Can you give me a method? Hmm? Uh, if you are expert, if you have some, um, some uh, mathematical simplification experience, you see, you can do something like this, 22 over 7, we don't do anything to this 7. We don't do anything to this 7, but 0 0.7, listen here, I like 0 0.7 as 7. Hmm? 1,000 converts into 10,000. Can you understand that max here? Hmm? I'll add one more zero and write it like this. Is it clear or not? Clear, yes. sir. Right. So what did I do? I divided 0 0.7 into 1,000 equals uh, 0 0.7 into 1000 equals 7 divided by 7 divided by 10,000. Am I right? Please write it. Please write with me. And do not forget, do not forget the square term, right? If you forget the square term, you will be in a big danger. Do not forget the square term. 
do not forget the square term. So final answer will be finally, isn't it? Finally, this will be not easy to simplify, right? Highly mathematical simplifications are there. Finally, this 22 over 7 will be there as it is. It will not be changed. Uh, multiplied by square. So this will be 7 divided by 7 divided by 10,000. 7 divided by 10,000. Square means another term, another similar term. Another 7 divided by 10,000 will be there. Can you understand that, Max? Okay. So this is the meaning of square. Please check where you can uh, understand it. Please check where you can understand it. If you have any doubt, just unmute the mic and ask. If you have any doubt, unmute the mic and ask. If not, please write. Right, so what can we do next here? Hmm? What can we do next? You see that this number 7 and this number 7 can be cancelled out. Can you see it? 7 and 7 can be cancelled out. So what will uh, be the remaining numbers? Then? What will be the remaining numbers? Hmm? 22 will be there into 1, 7 will be there because the other 7 was cancelled out. Then 10,000 into 10,000 mean how many zeros there? 10 to the power, how many zeros are there? 8. 8. 10,000 means 4 zeros and another 4 zeros, 8. Yes, very good. Thank you. 8 to the power 8. Right. Next equation, look at board. 10 to the power plus 8 comes up as 10 to the power minus 8. So 22 into 7 into 10 to the power plus 8 come up, comes up as 10 to the power 
minus 8. So this is the cross section area of the conductor in square meter. In square meter. Okay, dear. So we have found the cross section area of the conductor in square meter. Complete the note, dear. Is complete the note. Is this, is this clear for all? Are there any difficult points? Uh, if you want, you can multiply. It's not the problem. If you want, you can multiply 22 and 7. Then you can uh, uh, do 7 times 2, 54. 4 remaining. Uh, uh, 4 can be written. 1 remaining. 7 times 2, 14 plus 1, 15. So 154 to 10 to the power minus 8 can also be written. But I didn't write it because this is not a final answer. Cross section area is not the final answer. So I didn't write it. Okay, the cross section area of the wire is not a final answer. So I have not written it. Okay or not? So actually, cross section area means capital E, capital E. It's not a final answer. So I did not simplify it. Okay. That's the reason. Okay, uh, then let's try to find the drift velocity. Let's give a try to find the drift velocity. Somebody under the mic can tell me the drift velocity equation. What is drift velocity? Hmm? Lamai, what is the drift velocity equation? I divided by A and E. Very good. I divided by A and E. I divided by A and E. I over N. I is the current, A is cross section area, N is the number of free electrons in an unit volume. So we have found the current. As I remember, we have found the current as how many amperes here? Five amperes? Five amperes. Yes, thank you, dear. Five amperes. Cross section area. We have found the cross section area as. We know everything. Cross section area was found as 22 into 7 into 10 to the power uh, minus 8. Am I right? So this is the cross section area. I over A N. N is the amount of charge in an electron. The amount of charge in an electron is given as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90. This is given. A, sorry, 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 sorry. A, this is the E. This is E. A, N, E is given. What is N here? We have found it earlier. What is N? Somebody? 
number of free electrons in an unique volume of copper. Somebody answer to my tell me. 8.57 into 10 to the power 28. Thank you, yeah, thank you very much. Would you please uh, give me that answer as a fraction here? Can you give me it as a fraction, something divided by something? Six over seven multiplied by ten to the power seven multiplied by ten to the power twenty ten to the power twenty nine. Thank you. Multiply by ten to the power twenty nine. Right now, my students do the rest of the simplification and send me your answer to the Zoom chat. Right here. Do the rest of the simplification and send me your answers. Start. Right, how do we do a simplification here? You should understand that this division seven can be taken up as uh, in the next step. So what can we do here? In the next step, I'll take this seven up. So it will be multiplication seven and nothing will happen to the other numbers. What are the other numbers here? Oh, no, 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 no. See, this seven and this seven can be cancelled out, you see. This seven and this seven can be cancelled out. So five will be there. Okay, good. So what are the remaining numbers? 22 will be there. Uh, 7 cancelled out. 6 will be there. And uh, 1.6 will also be there. That's all right. 22, 6 and 1.6. What about the powers here? 10 to the power minus 8 into 10 to the power 29. So what's, what's it here? 10 to the power 29, 10 to the power minus 8 means 10 to the power plus 21. 10 to the power plus 21 because my, uh, 29 minus 8, 21. 
plus 21 and minus 90. What is it here? Plus 2, ne? So it, it should be 10 to the power plus 2. Right. Uh, finally, uh, we can write this as, look at more carefully, finally we can write this as 5 divided by 5 divided by 22 22 into 6 into 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power 2 means 100. 10 to the power 2 means 100. So 1.6 into 100 means 160. Because one decimal point should be removed. Right? Who got the answer up to this level here? Lamai? Who got the answer up to this level? Anybody in the class? Raise your hand up. Right. If you divide this, what will be the answer? What is the final answer if you divide this? Somebody under the mic can tell me or say uh, you answered the subject. What's the final answer? Hmm? Uh, is it... 2 point something into 10 to the power minus 4. Check. Uh, is it uh, 2.37 into 10 to the power minus 4 here? Is it correct or wrong here? Is this answer correct? 2.37 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter per second. Who got this answer? Who got 10 to the power minus 4? It's a very small value. Who got this answer? Lamai? Right. If you have written them all, we can go to the next question. Send me a message saying yes, if you would like to go to next question. Is it okay if I go to next question and discuss it? Oh, yeah. If you, if you are okay to go to next question and if you do not want any more time to write the things, send me a message. Uh, send me a message to Zoom chat saying yes. Then I will go to next question. Right. If you want any more time to write, please take a screenshot. If you want any more time to write, please take a screenshot. I'm going to erase. Right. Now we are going to go to Roman number four. We are going to go to Roman number four. Right. 
Somebody unmute the mic and read Roman number four. Unmute the mic and read Roman number four. Start. Assuming that the conduction electrons act like molecules in a perfect gas, determine the root mean square velocity of electrons at 27 degrees Celsius. Boltzmann constant equal to 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 3. The mass of an electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much, dear. So, uh, Boltzmann constant, you see, assuming that the conduction electrons, conduction electrons mean free electrons, act like molecules in a perfect gas. Determine the root mean square velocity, the RMS of electrons at 27 degree Celsius. Uh, in heat lesson, we have learned this equation. We have learned this equation. Average kinetic, don't write, average kinetic energy of an electron, of an electron can be found in two different equations. What are the two equations here? For the Roman number four, please start. Average kinetic energy of an electron can be found by the following two equations. Average kinetic energy of an electron. Sorry, uh, sorry. Average, uh, please write it like this. Average kinetic energy of a of a free electron. Average kinetic energy of a free electron, which is moving freely. Average kinetic energy of a free electron which is moving freely can be found by the following two equations. Average kinetic energy of a free electron, comma, which is moving freely, comma, can be found by the following two equations. You can use any of the two equations and find the average kinetic energy of a freely moving electron. Uh, look at board. Look at board. Average kinetic energy of a freely moving electron is half normal equation, half mv square actually. Half m uh, v square. Half m m v square. Here, this velocity. The velocity that we use to calculate this kinetic energy is said to be VRMS. Can you understand? VRMS square. So that's the point you should remember. The velocity, the average velocity of an electron should be used to calculate average kinetic energy. That velocity is known as RMS velocity. Now, what is the other equation that can be used to find the average kinetic energy of an electron? Hmm? What's the other equation? Average kinetic energy of an electron. Can somebody tell me? Mostly, uh, mostly this equation is used in chemistry. What is it here? Lamai. Uh, oh, don't you remember chemistry? Even in physics, I have told you, right? In the heat lesson. Average kinetic energy of a freely moving particle, especially in a gas, is equal to 1.5 times Kt. K is known as Boltzmann constant. What is K here? K is Boltzmann constant. Here is given Boltzmann constant as 1.4 into 10 to the power minus 22, minus 23 is the absolute temperature. So both equations, isn't it? Both equations give the both the equations give the same average kinetic energy, same average kinetic energy. So then we can write this equation. Therefore, both equations give the same 
average kinetic energy. Therefore, we can write that kinetic energy given by the first equation that is half mv square. Kinetic energy given by the first equation half mv square should be equal to the kinetic energy given by the second equation that is 1.5 k t. Right. Can you see uh, here? Can you simplify uh, VRMS from this? Can you simplify VRMS from this here? Hmm? You were right. Uh, sometimes you may, have written, uh, you may have written this equation like this also. Uh, let me show you that one also. Uh, half in VRMS square, no problem. It's not a problem. All the people write it like that. Uh, VRMS square is not a problem. But sometimes you may have written this 1.5 without writing 1.5, you may have written this as 3 over 2. Who has written it like this here? Just raise your hand up. Without writing 1.5, who has learned it as 3 over 2? Anybody in the class? Ah, okay, okay. So that's, uh, that's how you have learned it uh, even in chemistry, right? Ah, okay, now write this and try to uh, obtain an expression. Try to prove, uh, try to, uh, try to subject we are in this. Write all these things, please write all these things and try to subject we are in this. Uh, put your hands down there, put your hand down. Please, uh, okay, right. Uh, now, try to find, try to subject we are in this. You are trying it. Lama, you are trying to subject we are in this. Quick. Sir, uh, I have a little doubt, sir. Yes, I'm listening. Please tell me your doubt. I'll help you. Sir, instead of uh, following this procedure, can we use an equation where it says that the um, root mean square velocity is equal to the um, adiabatic constant times the universal gas constant times the absolute temperature over the mass, which is inside the square root? Can we use that equation, sir? Yes, definitely we can use that equation, but you must prove it first. That's the point. You can directly use that equation, but you should prove it. Otherwise, they will not give you the marks. There is a probability for them. There is a probability for the examination, examiners not to give you marks. That's the case. Otherwise, I will not prove this equation here. That method is correct. Yeah, okay. But the problem is you must prove it before you use it. Okay, dear. Thank you, sir. Right. Now you see, we can uh, cancel it out. I am very happy when students ask questions. You see, now we can cancel it out this two and this two. Can you see that? Two and two can be cancelled out. So what are the remaining terms then? If we cancel two and two out, what are the remaining terms? One into m is m into square of vr miss equals the other side we will have 3 k p am i right here inside the bracket we may have vr miss square 3 k p right now i can take this term m sorry i can take this term m to the other side then i can subject vr miss then i can subject the square of VRM is so square of VRM is equal 3kt divided by uh, simple. Please check whether I have written everything correctly. Hmm? I just take multiplication into the other side as division. In. So I have subjected VRM is. If VRM square is this, what is VRM is here? Shall you find this uh, without using a square root? Here? Shall you uh, try to find this value without uh, uh, without taking a square root? Here? I think that will be much easier. Right. So let's try to find the square of VR and miss. Square of VR and miss equals 
3 k t 3 into k Boltzmann constant is given as 1.4 into 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 23 10 to the power minus 23 so that is Boltzmann constant what is the temperature that they have given somebody unmute the mic and temperature uh, that they have given in the question here 27 uh, 27 but mm -hmm. the problem here is we must convert celsius into kelvin how do we convert this celsius 27 temperature into kelvin please tell me here adding 273 celsius very good we should add 273 this is how that's how we convert kelvin into celsius right and divided by mass of an electron given. Somebody please unmute the mic and tell me the mass of an electron is given in the picture. 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31. Very good. 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. Right. I'll give you a help for the simplification. I think it's better to give you a help. Otherwise, you will be so much afraid. Listen there. I don't do anything to this tree. I don't do anything to this tree. I don't do anything to this 1.4 uh, into 1.4 into and I don't do anything to this 10 to the power minus 23. Uh, 27 plus 300, 27 plus 273 means 300. Right. What about the denominator here? 9.1. This 10 to the power minus 31. This 10 to the power minus 31, I'll take it up. Then it will be 10 to the power. Somebody under the mic can tell me. If I take 10 to the power minus 31 to the to upward, then 10 to the power minus 31 will be Lamai. Plus, uh, the will be replaced by positive. Very good. It will be positive. It will be 10 to the power positive 31. Right? So then, next step. You see, I'll take, uh, you see, uh, this. Then, finally, it will be 3 into 1.4 into uh, now 10 to the power minus 23 and 10 to the power plus 31. What is it here? I'll write this 300 also. Huh? Then 10 to the power minus 23, 10 to the power plus 31. So what's the answer? Ten to the power plus eight. Very good. It will be 10 to the power plus eight. 31 minus 23 is 8. And remaining number will be 9.1. Right. So finally, it's a, it's a huge simplification. You see, one decimal point of 1.4 can be taken this side, so it will be 14. One decimal point of 9.1 can be taken this one side, then it, it will be 91. Can you identify it here? Hmm? 3 will be there, 1.4 will be 14, and this 9.1 will be 91. I have taken one decimal point uh, from both numbers. Is it clear here? And we have 300, I'll write this 3, into 10 to the power 8 with these two zeros. Somebody unmute the mic and tell me here. Okay, I'll give that zeros, otherwise you'll be confused. Into 10 to the power 8. Right. Now use the calculator and tell me the value. Oh, anything else? Is there anything else that can be done? Lamai? Hmm? So 14 and 91 can be cut. 14 and. Yes, I'm listening. 14 and 91 divided by 7. 
uh, how many sevens in 91? 13. 13. 13. What, uh, what about others here? 14 divided by 7 is 2. Uh, 91 divided by 7 is somebody? It is said to me 13. Is it correct? I don't know. Others are not helping up. Uh, Lamai? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, then this 300 will be there into 10 to the power 8 will be there. After that, then, after that, what can we do? Hmm? I think uh, for the rest, I'll help you. Listen, please write up to this point after that. Uh, for the rest of the things, I'll help you. Please write the things after this and send me a message saying done. After that, I'll help you to do the rest of the simplifications. Starting. Once you have written them all, send, send me a message saying done. After you have written them all, send me a message saying done. Then I'll help you to do the rest of the simplifications. Start there. Uh, is the time enough? Is the time enough for you to write the things here? Lamai? Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, I'll show you the rest of the simplification. If you want, please take a screenshot. If you want, please take a screenshot because I'm going to show you the rest of the simplifications. Right. 
we have obtained, look at board carefully, we have obtained something like this. We have obtained uh, square of VR ring miss. Square of VR ring miss equal 3 into 2 into uh, 300. 300 uh, into 10 to the power, don't write it, 10 to the power 8. Check. We are in a square equals this and divided by 30. I forgot it. Uh, divided by 30. Right. So, what is 3 times 3 here? What is 300 into 3? Can somebody hang with the mic and tell me? 3 multiplied by 300. Somebody hang with the mic and tell me. 900. 900. Very good. So, it is 900 times 2 times 10 to the power 8 divided by 13. Right now, if we RMS square is this, if we RMS square is this, then what should be we RMS? What should we do here? Hmm? If we RMS is this, what should we do to get find the RMS? Square root of it. Yeah, we should get the very good here. We should get square root of this number. Square root of 900 into 2 into 10 to the power 8 into 10 to the power 8 uh, divided by 13. Am I right here? Now it's so simple. I mean, so simple. You see, then VRMS equals what is the square root of 900 here? What is square root of 900? I'm going to make it really quick. 30. 30. 30. Square root of 2. You said calculate and tell me the value. Square root of 2. 1.41. 1. 1.414. Am I right? Square root of 10 to the power 8. 10 to the power 8 will be 10 to the power 4 when you get the square root. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Square root of 30, you say calculate and tell me. Square root of 13, you say calculator and tell me. 3 3.60 3 3.60 3.60 3.60 right. and final please divide and tell me the final answer here so in the examination you can use calculators you have to use log right. so what's the final answer Am I? Uh, final answer is 11,766. Uh, 766. 
meter per second. Who got this answer here? Lamai, who got this answer? Raise your hand up if you have obtained this answer. Right, complete answer is there. So when electrons are free to move, when no force is acting on free electrons, they will move here and there. They may have arbitrary motions. They will move along different directions. They may have arbitrary motions. During such arbitrary motions, they will collide. Then uh, they have a velocity during such collisions. They have a velocity of 11,766 meter per second. But what was the uh, drift velocity? What was the drift velocity? Somebody unveil the mic and tell me the damn drift velocity. 2.36 into 10 to the power minus 4. So is it a bigger velocity or a smaller velocity? Thank you, Buddha. Is it a bigger velocity or a smaller velocity? Smaller, sir. Smaller velocity. So what's, why do electrons have two such a different velocities here? Uh, let me erase this one, then I can easily ask questions. Wait. Can't I erase it? Uh, okay, now tell me the drift velocity here. Somebody unmute the mic and tell me the drift velocity. 2.36 into 10 to the power minus 4. So why do you, why they are such two different here? Why they are this much? It's, uh, it's 10 to the power minus 4 means. Very small velocity, drift velocity of an electron. Drift velocity of an electron is very, very small. But the uh, RMS velocity of the same electron is very large. Why is that? Can somebody guess the reason? Hmm? I would, I will be very happy if somebody tell me anything. Maybe answer may be correct or answer may be wrong, but if you try to give an answer, I'll be very happy. Why they are this much of difference is there? Why has a this much of difference? 10 to the power minus 4 means a very small velocity. Why is that? Lamai, please think and give me an answer here. Drift velocity is the velocity in one cubic meter volume. Drift velocity is and velocity. I didn't hear you earlier the rest here. Please tell me the rest also. Please do not suddenly mute the mic. Try here. I think you answer is correct, right? Okay, what is drift velocity? Somebody unmute the mic and tell me what the drift velocity is. The average velocity of a charged particle. Average velocity of a... What is drift velocity here? Hmm? The average velocity of a charged particle. Do you, uh, it's an average velocity of a charged particle when it is moved due to the influence of an electric current. Am I right, dear? What is drift velocity? Try again. What is drift velocity, dear? It is the average velocity of an electron when an electron is moved, when a charged particle is moved due to the influence of an electric current. What is VRMS? 
What is VRMS? If you remember the heat lesson, you must be able to answer. What is VRMS? VRMS is the velocity of a free electron when it is freely moving here and there. And that is the velocity of electrons when they freely move, they collide with each other. So it means now electron in two different cases. In the case one, electron is moved due to the influence of an electric current. In the second case, electron is freely moving. So when something is freely moving, it may have a larger velocity. When something is moved by force, it may have a smaller velocity. That's why they have two different velocity. Am I right, dear? Am I right, dear? When we like to go somewhere, we will go faster. We will run. But when somebody forces us to go to somewhere, if we don't like to go there, the velocity will be smaller, even in real life, something like that. So I think that's what asked in the next question. I think that's what they have asked in the next question. Let me show you the next question here. Right. Uh, somebody please read uh, Roman number five. Somebody unmute the mic and read Roman number five. Explain why there is a vast difference of magnitudes between V D uh, V velocity and the V R M S. Right. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. Roman number four. Roman number five. Roman number five, please write. V D is the drift velocity. V D is the drift velocity of an electron. VD is the drift velocity of an electron, comma, when an electron is moved, when an electron is moved, due to the influence, VD is the drift velocity of an electron, when an electron is moved, due to the influence of an electric current, due to the influence of an electric current. Vd is the drift velocity of an electron when an electron is moved due to the influence of an electric current. Due to the influence of an electric current. Full stop. Leave a line and write VRMS is the average velocity of an electron. VRMS is the average velocity of an electron. Come on. When electrons collide with each other during their free motions, VRMS is the average velocity of electrons when they collide with each other while they are during their free arbitrary motions, while they are free arbitrary motions. VRMS is the average velocity of electrons, comma, when they move, when they collide e with each other during their free motions. When they collide with each other during their free motions. In the first place, they are moved by and force. In the second case, they move free. Leave a line and write. Therefore, VD and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities. Therefore, VD and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities. Therefore, VD and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities. Therefore, VD and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities. Full stop. Hence, they are, hence there is a vast difference between them. Hence, there is a, hence there is a vast VAST. There is a vast different difference between them. Hence, there is a vast VAST. Hence, there is a vast difference between them. Right. Somebody unmute the mic and read the answer. 
Somebody unmute the mic and read the answer. Start there. Vd is the drift velocity of an electron when an electron is moved due to the influence of an electric current. VRMS is the average velocity of an electron when they collide with each other while in their free arbitrary motions. Therefore, Vd and VRMS are two different types of velocities. Hence, there is a vast difference between them. Thank you, Ria. Thank you very much. I would like uh, to hear one more voice. One more student, please read. Mm -hmm. Vt is the drift velocity of an electron when an electron is moved due to the influence of an electric current. VRMS is the average velocity of electrons they collide with each other during their free arbitrary moment, motion. Therefore, VT and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities, hence there is a vast difference between them. Thank you, thank you very much. Right, can, uh, can one more student read? Can one more student read? Vd is the drift velocity of an electron when an electron is moved due to the influence of an electric current. VRMS is the average velocity of an electron when they collide with each other during their free arbitrary motions. Vd and VRMS are two different kinds of velocities, hence there's a vast difference between them. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next question. I think you fully understood. So there are two different kinds of velocities. Maybe maybe the same electron is moving, but one at one time electron is moved due to the influence of an current. The other time it is freely moving here and there. So two different motions, two different kinds of velocities. There will be therefore there will be a huge difference between VD and VRMS. Right. Let's go to the next question. Let me show you the next question. Right, somebody unmute the mic and read Roman number six of 2000 AL past paper question. Somebody please read question number six quick. If the length of the wire is one meter, what is the time taken by an electron to travel from one end of the wire to the other? In reality, however, the bulb will light as soon as the switch is closed. Explain this. Thank you. Thank you very much. If the length of the wire is one meter, what is the time taken by an electron travel from one end to the other end of the wire? In reality, however, the bulb will light as soon as the switch is closed. Explain this as the last part of the question. That's the last part of the question. If the one, if the length of the wire is one meter, what is the time taken by an electron to travel from one end of the wire to the other end? Okay, let's give a try then. Let's give a try. Uh, how do you find it here? So here now they are talking about the drift velocity. Now they are talking about the drift velocity. So let me use this equation. Velocity equals, now they are talking about an electric current. They are talking about the motion of an electri uh, electron under the influence of a current. So velocity equals displacement. Displacement divided by time taken. Time taken. So here, this velocity is VD velocity. They are talking about VD velocity. Equal displacement. Uh, divided by displacement divided by time. 
So they ask us to find the time. So I'll use cross multiplication. I'll take time to there and mean to the other side. Then I'll get time taken equals uh, displacement divided by V. Displacement is one meter. They ask us to find the time taken travel one meter. How what is VD there? Somebody unmute the mic and tell me what the VD is. We have found the value. Quick. 2.36 into 10 to the power minus 4. 2.36 into 10 to the power minus 4. Minus 4. Very good. 10 to the power minus 4 will come up as 10 to the power plus 4 divided by 2.36. So unit will be seconds. Right. Somebody divide this value and tell me. Somebody divide this value and tell me. Quick. If you divide this 10 to the power plus 4, if you divide 10 to the power plus 4 means 10 to the power 10,000. If you divide 10, uh, 10 to the power plus 4 by 2.36, you get the answer as 4,237. 4,237.28. Unit is seconds. How do we convert seconds into minutes, dear? Hmm? If you divide this, if you divide this, you will get the answer as 4,237.28 seconds. How do we convert seconds into minutes or hours? So if we divide 4,237.28 by 3,600, because we know that there are 3,600 seconds for one hour. So if we divide this by 3,600, we will get the answer in hours. So uh, calculate time taken for an electron to travel from one end of the wire to the other end of the wire. Length of the wire is given as one meter length. Do you remember? Length of the wire is given as one meter at the beginning. So we are going to find the time taken for an electron to travel from one end to the other end of the wire uh, with this drift velocity because now electrons are moved uh, due to an arc. How many hours there? Divide and tell me how many hours. If you divide it, you will get 1.177 hours. 1.177 hours. This much of hours. Right, so then uh, what will happen then? Then what will happen? Look at board. Let's say there is a battery. There is a battery. We have connected this battery to a bulb like this. We have connected this battery to a bulb like this by using a wire of length one meter. We have to actually we have used two wires, right? Actually, we have used two wires. Right. This is the bulb. This is the bulb. Right. <laughs> right. Look at the board. Right. So there is a free electron. That's the free electron. It moves with this drift velocity. It moves with this free velocity. This free electron is moving with the free velocity, uh, drift velocity of Vd meter per second. Let's say this length, let's say length of the wire is one meter. How long does it take for this electron to travel from this end to the other end here? 1.177 hours. So once the battery is connected, once the battery is connected or switch is on, the bulb will light after 1.177 hours. Am I right? Hmm? 
lamine. This electron should come and go through the filament of the bulb. Then only the bulb will light. The electron should travel through the wire with the drift velocity. The electron should travel through the filament of the bulb. Then only it will light. This electron will take more than one hour to travel this one meter distance. So therefore, once the switch is on or once the bulb is connected to the wire, the bulb will light within one hour. It will take one hour to light the bulb. But in practice, but if in practice, once this at once we close the switch, bulbs light. Why is that? At once, let's say there is a switch. Let's say there is a switch. We close the switch. A closed switch. So once we close the switch, once we close the switch, the bulb will light at once. Bulb will light at once. But the electron here will take more than one hour to travel through the bulb. So bulb will not take one hour to light. Why is that? Write them all, draw even this figure and send me your answers to the Zoom chat. Write them all, draw the figure and send me the reason. That's why I'm asking the examination. Why the bulb lights suddenly without a delay of one hour? Send me your answers, suggestions to the Zoom chat. While you are writing, while you are drawing, uh, send me your answers to the Zoom chat. Start here.
Uh, I am reading your answers, dear. Many of the students have sent me the answers, so I am reading all of the answers, right? I am not silent. Actually, I am reading your answers. The real reason is this: only one student has sent me the answer. There are so many electrons in the wire. We have calculated the amount of free electrons in an unit volume of copper. You see the value; it's a huge number of electrons. So there will be so many free electrons. There will be so many free electrons. So once the battery is connected, once the battery is connected or switch is closed. Forces are formed on all the electrons, not only the free electrons, but also the other electrons. Once the switch is closed, once a battery is connected, forces are formed on all the free electrons. Therefore, all the free electrons start to move at once. Even the free electrons in the filament will start to move. So as the as even the free electrons in the filament of the bulb start to move. The bulb will light quickly. Got it? Okay. Let's write the description. After that, you will understand. Let's write the description. After that, you will understand. So please write. Once the battery is connected, once the battery is connected and switch is closed, once the battery is connected and the switch is closed, come on. Forces are formed in all the electrons. Forces are formed in all the electrons, comma, including the free electrons in the filament. Once the battery is connected and the switch is closed. Once the battery is connected and the switch is closed, comma. Forces are formed in all the electrons in the wire and the electrons in the filament of the bulb and the electrons in the filament of the bulb. Once the battery is connected and the switch is closed, and the switch is closed. Forces are formed on all the electrons in the wire and the electrons in the filament of the bulb. Full stop. Therefore, therefore, all the free electrons start to move at once. Therefore, all the electrons start to move at once. Then. The bulb light at once. Therefore, all the free electrons start to move at once. Will stop. Then the bulb light at once. The bulb lights at once. That's it. Somebody unmute the mic and read uh, my answer. Somebody unmute the mic and read my answer. Dear. Yeah. Once the battery is connected and the switch is closed, forces are formed on all electrons in the wire and the electrons in the filament of the bulb. Therefore, all the free electrons start to move at once and then the bulb lights at once. Right. Thank you very much, dear. Only very few students are talking, others are asleep, I think. I hate it. Thank you very much uh, for saving my life without uh, burning it. Thank you very much. I'm really grateful to you.
Yes, I'm alive. Right. Uh, shall we check the syllabus, dear? Shall we check the syllabus? Uh, because I want to see whether I have completed everything in the electricity syllabus. Oh, yeah. Can I find such a syllabus? Mm. Yeah. Because uh, we should start the electronic lesson, that's why. That's why I'm checking the syllabus. And at the same time, if you think that its answer is not clear for you, please ask. That's the end of 2008 level uh, situation. But even after I explain this, uh, it may be difficult for you. So if it is difficult, if you think uh, you need further explanations, please uh, unmute the mic and ask or send me a message to the Zoom chat. Uh, can you see the syllabus here? Lamai, can you see this syllabus? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go to electricity lesson. What are the lessons that we have completed so far? What are the lessons that we have completed so far, dear? Hmm? Uh, measurement, okay. Mechanics we have completed. Oscillation and waves, okay. Thermal physics, it means heat lesson completed. Gravitation field we have completed. Electric field we have completed. We are we have started magnetic field, but we have not completed it yet. Mechanical properties of matter, elasticity, viscosity, surface tension, we have completed. 90% of matter and radiation completed. So we just want to start electronic. Right? So I want to check about this electricity lesson. I want to check whether uh, I have completed electricity lesson. That's why I asked you to stay here. Please stay and let's check the syllabus of electricity. Uh, let's check whether we have discussed them, uh, discussed everything in the syllabus. Right. Uh, that is unit eight, page number seventy. Let's go to page number seventy here. Page seventy. Uh, that is not the electricity. We have reached the end of the syllabus. Then. Mechanical properties of matter, we have completed that lesson. That is electronic, this is electronic part. And this is electricity. Yeah, this is electricity. Let's check whether we have discussed everything in the syllabus. Right. Fundamental concepts. I'm talking about the middle column, right? Content column. I'm talking the uh, talking about the content column. Fundamental contents. Electric charge and electric current. Current equals uh, electric current equal I equal Q or T. We discuss. Uh, mechanism of conduction of a uh, conductor. Metallic conductor. I have explained. Uh, this is what I have explained today. Uh, Free electrons should be there for an current to pass. Expression for the relationship between current and drift velocity. Today we obtain expression for the relationship between current and drift velocity. We found it. Current density, I think we have not discussed it. Right? I should explain what the current density is. Potential difference. We have explained potential difference under Ohm's law. Then 
this equation resistance resistivity r equals rho l over a equation we have already discussed it r equals rho l over a we have already discussed it uh, then uh, we have already discussed it then uh, variation of resistance with the temperature we discussed temperature coefficient of resistance we discussed superconductivity we did not discuss it so we have found two things that we did discuss what are two things here current density superconductivity uh, then we have discussed uh, behavior of superconductors uh, okay. combination of resistors series combination parallel combination have we learned them or not Lamai, series connection and uh, plural, uh, parallel connection, we have learned, we completed them. Then conditions for validity of Ohm's law, to have Ohm's, to apply Ohm's law, physical conditions remain unchanged. Cross-section area and length of the conductor and temperature should be constant. VI curves, we have drawn voltage current curves. Ohmic conductors, ohmic conductors mean conductors uh, who are uh, obeys according to behaves according to Ohm's law, non-omic conductors. So I should give you a, a nod. Listen, I should give you a nod for uh, ohmic conductors and non-omic conductors. I should give a nod for them. Potential divider circuit. I should give a nod for that also. So that's why I decided to check the syllabus. Then only I can identify the things. So I should give a nod for these things. Right. So Today, I will not be able to do such a thing. Energy and power. I have explained electrical energy and electrical power. Expression for the energy dissipated. QV, VIT, we have obtained all these equations. We have obtained all of these equations. Right? So that part is completed. Electromotive force. I have explained what an electromotive force is. The electromotive force of a cell is the potential difference between positive and negative terminals with no current flows to the battery or the cell. We have explained formation of potential difference between plates of a simple cell. So it is something related to chemistry, but I will explain it next week. So even next week, I will give you the soil syllabus. Let's discuss it. Transformation of different forms of energy of various sources of electromotive force. What are the others? Uh, uh, what are the different forms of energy variation of sources of electromotive force? Right. For even that, I should give you a nod. Definition of electromotive force. I have given it already. Introduction, internal resistance. I have given application of laws of conservation of energy to a circuit having sources of force. Actually, that, that is what we have learned under. This is the part. Actually, we have indirectly learned this part in terms of flows. I do work, I'll explain. So it means I'm correcting the things that we have missed in electricity. No, no, we just complete and move to electronic lesson. Expression V, uh, v equals I minus R. Actually, this is E minus I R. This is the potent equation which is used to determine potential difference of a cell. The potential difference between positive terminal and negative terminal. We have used this one, but I have not given a note. I have used this expression, but I have not given a note. So I'll give you a note also. Determination of electromotive force and internal resistance of a cell. This is the practical. We have discussed this practical with the help of potentiometer. Determination of EMF and internal resistance of a cell. Do you remember? We have discussed this with the help of potentiometer. Combination of sources of electromotive force and source, series connection, parallel connection. So uh, we will discuss some questions for, uh, to cover these things. How batteries are connected in parallel, how batteries are connected in series. The best thing to learn them by doing some questions. So next week we will discuss some questions also. Graphical representation of uh, relationship between resistance and power dissipation of resistors. Right, so we can draw some graphs also. I think we have drawn such a graph in the past paper question. 
as I remember, it is 2005 past paper question. If not, uh, if not, I'll discuss that question. Condition for maximum power transfer. So, <clears throat> for a battery to transfer maximum power to a load, the internal resistance of the battery and the external resistance of the load should be the same. Load resistance and internal resistance of the power source should be the same, then only maximum power can be transferred. So there is the past paper question. It's a very good question to understand this. Even in theory class, I have drawn such a graph. Please check your theory note. If I don't given this graph, uh, let me know. Remember next week, so you can continue. So please stay in the class. Do not leave the class because you should uh, note the things that we have not discussed. Then only we will be able to complete this lesson next week, and then only we will be able to move to electronic. Electric circuit, we have completed electric circuit. Curve of laws, we have completed. First law of first law and second law, we have discussed. Uses of ammeter, voltmeter, and multimeter. Explain. Relationship between resistance of balance condition, piston bridge completed, meter bridge completed, uh, meter bridge completed, use of meter bridge. Uses of meter bridge, finding the temperature coefficient of resistance. So, uh, actually, we have indirectly done that one, but if you want, I can give you a note for this also. I can give you a note for this. Potentiometer completed, principle of potentiometer, calibration of potentiometer has to be considered using potentiometer. I have given a very good complete note for it. So, no need to discuss even, uh, even a single word, no need to say about potentiometer. I have completed it. Facts to be considered using potentiometer. So potentiometer completed. Uh, comparison of electromotive forces of cells resistance. We have discussed so many practicals. Advantages and disadvantage of using potentiometers. I think I should give a note for it. I should give you a note for this section. All the other sections, okay. Uh, then electro. Uh, what is this? So I am going to discuss this part in a magnetic field. Electromagnetic induction, magnetic flux, linkage, those things. Uh, I'll cover those things in magnetic field. Okay, yeah. 8.6 uh, part, it's better to discuss under magnetic field. So we have already uh, started magnetic field, so we can cover that, section, uh, that part in magnetic field, right? Uh, it's, it's not easy to discuss such things in electricity. Okay, yeah. So actually that is electric, uh, that's what we discuss. That's what we learn as electromagnetism. So even it is given under the, <clears throat> given as a part of electric current, uh, the things after 8.68, these things are magnetic field, you see? Magnetic flux, uh, Faraday's flow, lens flow, electromagnetic induction, I think you remember that we have obtained this equation if we plus B I L. Let me show you those equations here. Transformers. Right. So those things will be covered in uh, magnetic field. So it means uh, we have almost power. Uh, it means 99% of electricity is over. So uh, next week, let's give a complete note. Uh, let's give a note about the, uh, the things that we have missed in electricity syllabus. And uh, I think within two hours, we, I'll be able to complete electricity, not electricity lesson. Then I'll go to electronic lesson. Okay, right. So I think that's enough for today. That's enough for today. See you, bye, good luck.